Hi, this is Marie Spalding of Living Felt. Thank you for joining us today. In this tutorial, we're going to look at the basic building blocks of 3D needle felting. We'll show you just a few shapes that you can use to make just about anything in your needle felted sculptures. So let's get started with something as simple as a ball. A ball makes a great foundation for many needle felted objects. And you can make even little needle felted beads for jewelry. So let's get started with a ball shape. I like to work with the length of wool, about 18 inches long, but if you're making small balls or larger ones, you'll decide the length and the thickness of your wool. So to get started, we just start with a basic tube, and you'll see that I tuck in the ends and just roll and tuck and roll and tuck. Very, very tight. This foam is very firm, so I can press down on it very hard. The tighter we roll, the easier it is to needle felt and compact the fibers. I'm using one of my favorite tools, it's a pen tool, just to get those fibers to grab onto each other while I get started. Continue rolling and tucking and rolling and tucking. You don't want to see any big folds. You want to just continue to tuck those fibers in. Now something else you could do is you could hold it in your hand like this and tuck this way using your thumb to hold it tight. Whatever works for you, I tend to work on my foam the most. When we get to the end, you have this little flange just fold it over and needle felt it down. In this method, we are needle felting straight into the wool, up and down, just tucking all the fibers in. Don't spend too much time on one side of your sphere. Continue rolling it and compacting the fibers. Roll, 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 and needle felt straight in and out. It's very easy to make a ball, and it make a great foundation for a body or a head. You can make it an egg shape. You can flatten the bottom. The most important thing is you want it to be nice and even, and for it not to have big pockets where it's soft and then firm in other places. So to do that, make sure you continue to rotate it as you needle felt it and work the entire surface in several passes, just as if you were working a ball of clay. You wouldn't spend all of your time on one part, you would work the entire ball. And your needle provides that compaction. So if we kept needling, felting on our ball, then we could end up with something like this. This ball was needle felted, and then I flattened the bottom. Flattening the bottom is very easy. I like to use something like this metal tool and just compact straight in and flatten the bottom. The same thing with my funny head here, flatten the bottom of that and that'll make it sit nicely. You can add your design on top or some funny little face, but let's look at some other shapes that will be helpful. So here's a, here's a nice big ball that I've started. This is my gray ball, and we're gonna work with this a little bit. So some other shapes besides a ball would be a fold. Folds are pretty easy to do. We just start with a piece of fiber. Here's a small little rectangle, and using a skewer, I like to work with wooden skewers for a few things. I'm just gonna fold those fibers back across the skewer. You can, if you wanna make a nice line, you can needle felt right across the skewer, but in this case, I'm gonna make something rounded. So I'll start by compacting the fibers down. And I'm not trying to attach it to the foam. Really, I'm just trying to go into the basic thickness. And I'm not needle felting the edges yet, because I'm gonna clean those up. Turn it over just compacting the fibers at this point, and this is just a basic fold. Now, I want to start sculpting this into a shape. I actually have one that I've already started. And here's my shape, and the edge is loose. This is where I'm going to attach it onto my larger piece. So, I can use this, or you could use a paper template to start sculpting your piece. I'm using a 38 star needle now, and I'm just going to start tucking those fibers in towards the side. This is a basic fold of wool, and then we're shaping it into a desired shape. I'm just gonna work those sides, and I'm gonna continue working the top and the bottom. So I have one that I've been working on for just a little while, it only takes a few minutes, but you can see that this is nicely felted, and I'm still working this side. So again, I can use this first one that I made as a model, and continue sculpting, and compacting the fibers. That's all we're doing. Entangling the fibers and compacting them. Now this basic fold 
could be an ear or a wing, many different things. So that is working with a fold. Now I also like to make rolls. Rolls can be done a couple of ways. The first one is on a skewer like this. You can make a roll and you just grab your thumb with the fibers and I actually roll towards myself and just start rolling. Roll very tightly and when you get to the thickness that you want, you can pull off the balance. You can felt it with your hand a little bit, just twist it. We're actually dry felting a small amount. And now I'm going to needle felt it while it's on the skewer. I go at a very shallow angle and needle felt up and down the length, compacting the fibers. Now how you complete this is going to depend on what you want to do with the finished project the finished piece that you make, the finished cylinder. It might be an arm of a teddy bear. It might be the leg of something. In this case, I have one that I've been working for a little while. I've made it very thick and stubby. To get the bottom stubby, I'm just needle felting straight in like that. And I've just continued needle felting all around the sides. I don't go straight down so much, but working this direction and then working this direction, always compacting in in and I've kept this top part loose to get it off I'm gonna push it off so here I've been working on a little guy I just got started I made a nice large ball I flattened the bottom and I used this same shape to make his leg and actually attached it to the front just like this needle felting in and then continuing to sculpt First I'm going to attach, this is my 36 gauge needle, it's really good for making deep punctures and attaching. And then I'll continue to shape that leg with my 38 star. So now we looked at our tube and that's just, that leg is just a stubby tube. But you can also make a tube on something like an armature wire or even a pipe cleaner. So here I've started a tube on a pipe cleaner and you can see how big and lofty it is. I'm still needle felting and shaping it, but this is gonna be the trunk of our elephant. So I'm gonna keep this end loose this time and not needle felt it down, and I'm gonna compact this one. Actually cut it off of the pipe cleaner once you get it down to shape, and here I've made the snout. So it's on a arm little uh, floral armature wire pipe cleaner, and I can just attach it right to the face. So, so far, we've made just a ball and a tube, and we've made flaps. And these flaps will become our elephant's ears. And with a little patience and dedication, we can work those in and make him look quite natural. But for now, he's just in draft mode. So here's a couple of other things, like this octopus is made with the same basic shape, a ball that's flattened on the bot bottom and some tubes that have gone over pipe cleaners. This beautiful little snail is a wonderful tutorial that you'll be able to find on our website by our production manager Lynette. She did the folds for the body, a ball for the shell, armature wire, and little balls. So many great projects you can do with just balls, tubes, and these folds. And then you could also do something that I call a cone, which is just like a tube, except you continue to hold very tightly on one end and let the top be more bulky, kind of like cotton candy. And with that, you could make something like a beak or a pointy hat or something to that effect. We wish you great success with your 3D felting projects. We hope these building blocks help, and we look forward to seeing your pictures. This is Marie Spalding of Living Felt. Thank you for joining us, and as always, happy felting.